Before Omale was Apple's new music artist of the month in June 2020 at the age of 22, before being celebrated by the BET as the Amplified International Artist of the Month, before being nominated for four categories at the Hedis 2020 Awards, one of which he won, Omale started as an unknown rapper going by the name of Lil Kim. He later ventured into producing music, songwriting, but then he saw that his efforts weren't being credited. So he was making music, but he wasn't getting any credit for his music that he was making. So he decided to do it all on his own. What could he have done if not for music? He would have become a pastor. My name is Alexander and welcome to Before Fame Africa. Here we profile Africans before they were famous. If you have not subscribed, subscribe now and hit the notification button so that you are notified of new videos that I upload. Stanley Omadidia, better known as Omale, was born in 19th May of 1998. He hails from a place known as Ikwere in River State, Nigeria. He attended comprehensive high school in River State before proceeding to the University of Port Harcourt. He however did not graduate at the University of Port Harcourt as he left the university to pursue his music career. He comes from a musical family. His grandfather used to play percussions for the legendary singer Celestine Oku and he grew up watching his father playing drums. Growing up, he had influences from Port Harcourt such as Duncan Mighty, Banner Boy and many others. But it is Drake who would later inspire him to start rapping and he and his cousin at the age of around 16 to 17, they joined together to form a duo group called The Big Two and at that time Omale was going by the name of Lil King. Quickly however, he decided that rap wasn't what he wanted to do and he therefore ventured into songwriting and song producing juggling his time between home, school and studio. During this time, he saw that his work wasn't getting the credit that he deserved. Sometimes he would produce music and when it is released, he tried contacting the people that he produced music for and they weren't receiving his calls, they weren't acknowledging him. So he decided to also venture into performing and writing his own music. This lack of an acknowledgement led him to produce his first single in April 2019 which was called Do Not Disturb. A month after releasing Do Not Disturb, Omale released Hello Brother, a soulful lo-fi tune proclaiming undying love for his brother. It is after releasing these songs that he would meet two people that would bring him to the limelight. The two people are Valentine Gaji, also known as Valo, and Marshall Onemu, the CEO and CEO of Kikad Music Label. So the story goes like this, Omale wanting his music to be heard on the radio, he looks for contacts in Port Harcourt for people that he can contact. He then finds an email that he sends to Valo, introducing himself as a producer and as a songwriter. He sends those two tracks that he had already made, sends them to one of his colleagues who don't, doesn't think much about it, but Valo being convinced that there is something here, he flies out from Lagos to Port Harcourt to see Omale. At that time, Omale was not known. He had almost, I think, 1,500 followers on Instagram and Twitter. But after speaking with Omale, Valo decided to give him a contract. By June 2019, they had signed a contract. So Omale moves to Lagos. He is exposed to the life of Lagos there. Valo and team takes him out in clubs, trying to give him a new experience, a fresh experience, so that the city can start influencing him and how he writes his music. One night when he goes to the club, he sees Davido and then he hears how Davido's music is being played all over the club. He wishes to have his music played in the same way. And this influence that Lagos was bringing into him, he channeled it to the next EP that he was working on and the next music that he was working on. He took a seven month break starting August of 2019 to around lockdown time in March 2020. During this time, he was creating his new EP called Get Late. But in January 2020, he produced a song for his fans, you know, because he had been quiet for some time, called Bad Influence. The song became the most streamed Nigerian song at Apple Music by the end of 2020. On February 14, 2020, he released You, his first official single. He then released his five-track debut EP, Get Laid, on May 22, 2020. Initially, the EP was called Child's Play, but on deliberations with the team, they renamed it to Get Laid. 
He took a seven month break to work on his EP between August of 2019 to March of 2020 during lockdown time. But before that, on January 2020, he produced a song called Bad Influence, you know, to get his fans worked up because he had, it had been a long time before he released any music. The EP peaked at number one on the Nigerian music charts. All five songs of the EP reached top 15 of Apple music charts on Nigeria, with you picking at number one. In October, Omale appeared on Olamide's album Cape Dem. His feature on Olamide's track Infinity topped the Apple Music charts for Nigeria. That November 2020, Omale released his second five track EP, What Have We Done? All five tracks reached the top 20 of the Apple Music charts for Nigeria, with Godly being number one. He was also the first African artist featured on Audio Max Up Now program for Imagine Artists, including in a jazz festival's 20 artists to watch in 2021, and was named BET Amplified International Artist of the Month for November 2020. From here on, people started hearing about Omale from Nigeria to the UK. Even a football player called Jadon Sancho from Dortmund shared his music to his friends and even tweeted about it. About this success, Omale tweeted, This time last year, I was holed up in my room singing my guts out, not knowing if people would ever hear or even appreciate these songs. Fast forward a few months later, those songs came together to become an EP titled Get Laid, and it changed my life. I see myself everywhere. I hear myself everywhere. Feels great. Everything I ever wished for. Speaking about his songwriting process, Omale has indicated that most of his songs are inspired by his own real life experiences, even quoting bad influence to say that it was inspired by some actual health issues. From this point onwards, Omale had become famous. He was now into the upper echelons of contemporary music in Nigeria and in Africa in general. On 9th November, 2020, he was signed into Warner Music Group and Asaya Records, a subsidiary of Warner Music Group. He was no longer a new kid on the block, and he is now an Afrobeat sensation. Thanks guys for watching this video, I hope you have enjoyed it. This is a journey of Omale. Let me know in the comments Omale's songs that you like the most, and also which artist I should cover next. As always, see you in the next video.